Hey guys, Killstokes here. Welcome back to another video. If you guys are brand new, thank you for finding the channel. Typically in these videos, we spend some time walking you around the market, showing you the best trading opportunities that are on my radar for the week ahead. This week, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to walk you through some analysis that we performed this week. Now, I've gotten a lot of different questions or a lot of the similar questions on different platforms this week about the differences between day trading and swing trading. Some were kind of pretty basic, like are there any um, differences to your approach? Do you approach your day trading differently than your swing trading? Others were, you know, what's better for a beginner trader? Is it easier to start as a day trader, easier to start as a swing trader? I even got one talking about kind of, you know, bigger picture uh, investing, multiple revenue streams, stuff like that, setting up your trade business and, and is it worth kind of having two separate accounts or a single account so the topic's been on the mind and if you want to answer to those questions I, I have a few podcast episodes on them already I have another one coming out this uh, December 13th I believe talking about more of the business side of things and I even just wrote an article for medium for you guys that uh, still like to read you dinosaurs out there talking about why I gave up day trading but Needless to say, the topic was on the mind. So I thought it was a perfect example to share um, some analysis that we did in the live trading room where we essentially combined our swing trading and day trading analysis. And if you've spent any time in the live room, you know that it's really a seamless transition, right? I, I, every, I, I guess every, every time frame on the market or in the market can leave me clues, right? Although I look at my swing trading and day trading as two separate businesses, I start off with my swing trading analysis, which for me is on the daily, the four hour and the hourly. And then I seamlessly transition to my day trading, which is on the 60, the 15, the five, and then like the range bar charts, which are uh, basically a different look at the 15 or five, uh, five minute charts, tick charts essentially. And although I look at them as two separate entities, right? The information that I have, right? The bigger, picture predictions that come from my swing trading analysis can often help me with my day trading analysis as far as shooting for target locations and, and kind of analyzing the range of where I can be involved in the trade. So although they are separate, they work the same. And I think that's important for many traders to know because I, I think a lot of people think they have to be these two separate things. And the honest truth is analysis is analysis. You still want to be consistent with what time frames you watch and, and what you're allowed to do on each of them. So you, I'm not saying you should start on the monthly and go down to the one minute every single day. There has to be a process included in it, but that process can complement each other. And hopefully the trading opportunity that we break down in this video um, will provide a good example of that. Yen, gold, pill back. Let's take a look at Aussie, New Zealand. Aussie, New Zealand. Let's take a look at that. Aussie, New Zealand. Uh, AUD, NZD. A rare pair to look at, but one that is in somewhat of an interesting location, right? Again, going back to our IPDE, identify, predict, decide, execute. We look at the most recent level of structure structures that were broken here with Aussie New Zealand and you can see that we clearly have a breaking close to the downside right would you guys agree AUD NZD this is 130 clearly have a breaking close to the downside so you look at something like this and you anticipate or you identify a breaking close to the downside you predict that we're likely to continue lower and then the question you want to ask yourself is if we're likely to continue lower, where are we likely to continue lower to? Um, we did not look at Dollar Canada. We can look at that next. Um, so we identified a break and close below. We predict a, a continued move lower. And the question is, if we continue lower, where are we likely to continue lower to? And the first place that stands out to me is this previous level of consolidation or this previous swing right here. Can you guys see this? The swing from, we went from a swing low here to a swing high right there. And if we look at the bottom range of this, you guys notice, notice it again? Remember we talked about kind of identifying areas where price has um, bounced, paid attention to a few times. You can see we have one right in this area. So I'm gonna take this horizontal line and drag it down a little bit larger or a little bit lower 
right to this 103.45 area, 103.50s, right? So we predicted that price is likely to continue lower. We, we predicted an area in where price is likely to continue lower too. Now we got to decide how, how are we going to get involved or can we, can we get involved? And again, the first thing that I look for, this is my personal trading strategy, is a, a pullback. Um, and you can see that we have a little small retracement right here, right after the break of this structure, right? If price action were to pull back into this level, or if we continue down and pull back longer, that's going to offer an opportunity to trade a pullback and continue it down to the lower lows here. So definitely Euro Aussie, something that you want to have on your radar. Let me just get this into our chat real quick. Um, Butterfly in the four hour as well. Let's check that out. Not Euro Aussie, Aussie New Zealand. Sorry, Aussie New Zealand. Aussie New Zealand potential trend continuation setup uh, bearish. And of course, see Tuesday live room recording watch it watch it all right let's take a quick look at the the lower time frame of this i don't think we're going to see too much and then we'll go to uh actually i want to look at a range bar chart and then we'll see um if we have anything now i would tell you this actually i would tell you this um descending triangle here on the five look for a break lower here on the five look for a breakout lower here on the five any day traders out there descend? I mean, obviously you can look for the same thing on a higher time frame. Look for a pullback, descending triangle, right? Market came, market broke structure. We came back up, brief pause, descending triangle, breakout, breakout alert for sure. Breakout alert for sure here. Just curious, real quick. Uh, Press the wrong button there. Um, what's the yeah, look at this real quick. Uh, here's something interesting. Again, I, 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 it, I've worked with volume for years and I still haven't been able to make any conclusions, but in a different market, what you would look for prior to, what do you think you would look for prior to a breakout? Again, I'm not saying do this in Forex because it's a different game. But look for increasing volume. As that breakout occurs, the bigger the volume you have during the breakout, the more of a actual breakout it is. It is versus a false breakout. But yeah, check out yeah check out the five minutes descending triangle. You may get a you may get a break there. Um, just curious what the range is here zero 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 two on the five minute. Sheesh, small range. Gosh, um, so you're not you're not even able to see this on a on a a five range chart um you may have to go down to a normal tick chart but yeah go down to maybe a 20 range if you want something really really small but look for look for the break of a uh, descending triangle here potential continuation lower again we we had a um we have a spot identified if you give me a second i can actually remember what that spot is 103 103.50s. We're currently trading at 104.40. So yeah, 90 pips of potential profit. Keep an eye on this breakout. You get a confirmed break. If you're aggressive, you can sell at market or wait for the pullback. That's a good day trade. That's a good day trading opportunity. And even if you, let's say, let's say even if you sell on a break and you have a very aggressive stop or your stop is above this level right here, you're looking at risking you're looking at risking 10 to gain about again uh, to gain about potentially 90 you probably want to tighten this up or get this a little bit higher above that range so you're probably risking about 15 but that's a it's a massive risk reward That's a massive risk reward. You know what? It, it's it's tight, but it's not tight. It, it seems tight. The number seems tight. But so if, if I give you this number right here, right? If, if 
if I if I say this is five pips, yeah, okay, I would say if, if I see this is five pips, right? It doesn't it, it? It seems tight, but it's actually in a, a very loose location. So you got you got your lower lower low lower close. If you're aggressive, you can buy it. You can buy at market, or excuse me, sell sell at market. If you're aggressive, sell at market. And go for go for go for that home run. Now let's just look at a few other places, maybe a, a more conservative place to take off part of your position. A ninety, a ninety yard run, right? Ninety pip run is a pretty significant one. Um, you got one six one eight action down here at one oh four thirties. That can certainly be a a first target position. We can take swing high to swing low, flag pull. Copy and paste it. That's going to be right at that 618. Pretty good confluence right there. So maybe you say to yourself, hey, initial targets right here. 10430s, secondary targets down at that 103, I think it was 55s we talked about. And again, I don't think you need to have stops up here. I would have stops above these highs. This last kind of bump up in the in the descending triangle. And I'll give you that'll give you a pretty decent risk profile, even the even to these first targets right here. That's a good day trade, man. I'll give you about a two to one to that first one. That's how trading messes with your brain. Anyway, hopefully, if, if you're able to trade this, um, Hopefully this is something you got involved in. And not if not, this is something you take notes on. And I, I hope you take notes on the entire process, right? And we didn't jump down to the five minute. We didn't jump down to our day trading time frames and look for the descending triangle, right? We started off by making the general prediction about the markets, right? We started off in the higher time frame. We identified, we said, huh, breaking close below structure. Based on that identification, we predicted, okay, this means, I know this means that we're more likely to continue lower. We did our work. Where can we continue lower to? Okay, this level. So we've identified our range, right? There is there is potential short, the, the, the range for potential shorts go from here to here. And then we set it up for how we would handle it on a swing trading time frame. Look for the pullback, blah, 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 blah. And then we went down to our day trading time frames. And we saw a pattern formation, right? We saw a pattern formation that we know typically breaks out to the downside, right? Descending triangle. So we're combining overall analysis of predicting a move to a downside with a specific pattern formation that says we're likely to continue to the downside. You see the theme there, guys? You see two and two lining up together? Yeah, that's what you're looking for in your trading, right? For those ideas, those, I don't want to call them filters, but whatever you want to call them, to align. And then, of course, finding a way to take the trade. So we'll keep an eye on this, see how it, how it plays out. As always, the goal is to reduce risk as much as possible. So as price starts moving in your direction, start reducing that risk. If your risk was all the way above the highs, maybe you take it and put it above that entry candle right here. Once again, we, we shouldn't, you know, good moves don't last. We should not come back to this level. So I think reducing your risk down this area isn't a bad idea. Reducing the break even right now, probably a bad idea. You got to give it some breathing room. If you didn't have a chance to get involved, keep an eye on the range bar chart. Again, range bar chart is going to give you a little bit of a, a different look. Right? You can see we, we, got, we had strong momentum, right? Strong selling strength. That's why the RSI is oversold. Wouldn't surprise us to get a little bit of relief. 
you may have another opportunity to get involved in a short. Any questions? But there's also downside opportunity as well. Speaking of downside opportunity, huh? 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 Now, by this point, what should, what should, if you're aggressively trailing, what should you do with stops? You're, 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 you probably hit target one if you front ran at all, or maybe that spread is messing with you. But you've most likely hit target one, right? Again, 10429s is the 1618. Front run by a little bit, boom. What do those stops do? Break even. Yes. Reduce your risk. Break even. So now, right? You've made some money on the trade. It's gone to your initial target projection. Stops are rolled to break even. This is where you have the second half or second portion. It could be, you know, thirds, fourths, however many positions you trade and how many you break them up. Um, that's on you. Now you hold for the big boy. Now you see if you can get that big runner. About 80 pips lower. And that's where you make, that's where you make the bulk of your profits. That's where you make the bulk of your profits. Good example of a breakout trade there. Even here, Aussie, New Zealand, right? Look for the, look for the flag. Look for the flag, a little bit of relief, a little bit of a pullback. Look for the next leg down, right? Because that bigger projection, talking about Aussie, New Zealand now, is still all the way, all the way down here. So this is something you should be watching all week until we get to that level to offer selling opportunities, trend continuation opportunities. And again, I like the range bar charts because you tend to get more wigglage, right? You tend to get more opportunities for pullbacks and small flag patterns and stuff like that. So it gives you more opportunities to get involved in those moves. All right, guys, so I want to pop back into the live markets and give you a little bit of an update of our situation here. Uh, depending on where I ended up editing the video, I don't know how much I, I cut out. We ended up trading, um, or, or I guess ending at about 104.50s. And you can see we worked our way down a little bit lower to about 104.20s, but we never made it to that lower, that bigger projection that we were looking for, that 103.55-ish area. But remember that this was not just a day trade, but a swing trade as well. And um, while I mention it, um, we did go on, if you, for you guys that are on the platform that have access to the live room recordings, go out and check out Tuesday's video. We actually did go on to have a little bit of a rant about the differences between day trading and swing trading and how, um, or I guess, which is better for the novice trader and, and, and why that is. So you can check out kind of the, the full session. That's going to be the Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday session right here, um, probably in the back end about um, at the very end. So after the two hour mark, somewhere around there, check it out. And I'll tell you this before we get back into the charts. If you're someone that doesn't think either attending the live rooms live or, or watching the recordings is important, you are mistaken. Um, um, one of the things that we've done here with Tier 1 Trading, we put in a lot of work into setting up a system to help people become consistently profitable traders. And we're really, really, really good at doing that. But everything is done purposely. It's not just courses. It's not just accountability sessions. A lot of this stuff is the supportive stuff, the supportive system around learning how to trade. Trade, whether it's the traders on our platform that are helping you out or whether it's stuff like trading edge videos, live Q and A's or the live room sessions, because these are really your practice ground, right? This is the time where you're going to take the concepts that you're learning and see how you can practically apply them to the market. And if you ask anyone out there that's ever traded, the live market environment is a little bit different than in your trading book or on your YouTube videos and stuff like that. So it is a, there is a gap that needs to be bridged in order to have success. And I got an email from one of the clients that we've been working with for a while now who has, I don't want to say has been going through a, a, a slower learning curve because he understands the concepts, but 
he's been having issues really bridging the gap. And, and one of the one of the reasons for that is because he hasn't been able to spend time or hasn't been deciding to spend time in our Q&As in our live room where he can take what he's learning and see how it's actually done, see how this tool, um, which is the skill of learning price action and, and strategies and all that fun stuff, see how that tool is actually used to extract profit from the market. And he sent me this email the other day. He said, Akil, I spent tonight in Jason's live room. Certain things are clear to me now. For example, he showed a level in the market he is waiting for, and if slash when it reaches that level, he would be buying. I asked if you believe it's going to go down. I asked if you believe it is going to go down there, can't you technically take a sell order on the way down? As he put it, you're looking for trouble and should stick to one direction. The reason being is simple. I don't know that price will get down there. It's if price works its way down, its way down there, then I would be interested in buying. So why would I be interested in selling when I have no idea whatsoever that price is going to go down there? And being able to see this live really helped. Also, from what I'm noticing, I may be wrong, I don't know, but it seems like everything I already know is enough for trading. I just need to learn how to put it all together. Yes! <laughs> this was the, when I read it, I just, you know, I erupted, the light bulb went off because this is what we've been trying to tell this trader for so long, but it, it takes firsthand experience to kind of, you know, see these things for yourself. He says, watching him do these live trades, he's looking at structure, where price is going to go, if, prices, uh, if price gets to those certain levels, then use entry signals, the fine tuning part that I'm working on right now, and then do it. It's the whole IPDE process. Identify which way the market is going, up, down, sideways. Are we at structure? Are we in no man's land between structure levels, et cetera, et cetera? Predict where market is likely to go from this point and how it's likely to get there. Decide once market gets there, if it gets there, how will you enter the trade? Three bar reversal, 2618s, blah, 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 blah. Execute. No point in doing all this work and not pulling the trigger, right? Trading psychology. If all things have worked out how it's supposed to. It's been really helpful being there. Might not have understood everything, but at least I understood the general gist of everything. Amen. I love this. And if you're someone that's experiencing the same thing, obviously, if you're on the platform, get in the live rooms, dedicate your, you know, dedicate some time to getting in there live. It's better because you can ask questions and whatnot. We can look at examples of stuff you're having trouble with. But if not, watch the recording. All of mine are recorded. Uh, Jason usually records a few each uh, week as well. Look through them um, and, and just dedicate maybe just one session uh, a week or something like that. You know, obviously, the more the merrier, but one session a week. And if you're someone that's not on the platform, hey, part of that 14-day trial membership that I should be plugging more, but I don't because I'm not really good at sales, part of that is access to the live room. So if you decide to take the 14-day trial membership, right, you get access to all the cool, shiny stuff, a uh, course, some systems, and, and blah, 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 access to the chat make sure you spend time in a live room. There are two live rooms, a London session, a New York session. You can basically spend it, if you want to, right, four hours a day in the markets live. So you can fully take advantage of your two weeks on the platform, and I would certainly recommend doing that. So I thought that was a very important point, and I want to get, a, to get that across before we hop back into the charts. Um, but although the, the day trading example... Um, didn't well it worked out it hit targets but it didn't go to the extended targets we still had this on our radar for a swing trading example as well coming into the end of the week and i can show you what i'm looking for right here right if we just measure out the basic ebbs and flows of price action the swing highs and swing lows all that fun stuff the the stuff that you learn in the foundation course the stuff that we teach you in each of our free workshops that we do you can see that price recently made a new structure low meaning that our area in which we are looking for the reversal, right, is going to be right in this green box. Now, as you can see, right, the candle that ended about two hours ago, it's about Friday afternoon around, it just turned three o'clock, so the one o'clock candle on Friday just gave us a higher, high, higher close. And if you're familiar with our rules for how we identify trend, how we read price action, this type of move is going to violate the previous trend, right? So going back to the, the IPDE that we talked about earlier, that, that backbone uh, process that we use in our trading, we identify a violation of trend. We, we've gone from a bearish trend to now bullish rotation, meaning the, the bear trend is over. We were on the lookout for consolidation or perhaps a, a bullish move. Um, essentially, this means that I am no longer looking for shorts. 
unless we can get some type of engulfing candle. It is Friday afternoon, three o'clock. London is done. Asia is done. New York is done, to be honest with you. No one's trading at this time. You can see the volume here is very, very tiny, right? We're not going to get an engulfing candle unless some weird news event comes out in the next uh couple hours or so. So we're going to look at this as a violation of trend ending into the week, which means I am no longer looking for shorts. Now, what we could put in, and this would this is what's going to be on my radar for the week ahead, is a potential head and shoulders pattern. The head and shoulders pattern is a traditional, a classic reversal pattern in the market where price comes from a very directional move and it's essentially a, a slow reversal. So uh, think about a, a big a big sharp reversal would be a, a V top or a V bottom where it just comes straight down and goes straight back up. A more conservative one or uh, I guess not more conservative, what's the word I'm looking for? A less aggressive one would be like your, your double tops and double bottoms. Your head and shoulders is going to be a um, a slower one, one that makes more time. It leaves you all types of cool clues um, on the path. And if you're a frequent follower of the channel, I've got plenty of videos on here talking about head and shoulders pattern. Just Google search Akil Stokes head and shoulders or just go through all the trading edge videos uh, on the platform. We've got a whole training uh, lesson uh, dedicated to it. So you can go back and watch that as well. But one of the tricks here that we like to look for in our head and shoulders, and this is brought to us by one of the traders that I've worked with for a while, Cody. This is a, one of the traders that got recently funded, is an aggressive buy at the right shoulder. And this is setting up perfectly for that. And if I didn't jinx it, right? We have the violation of the right of the left shoulder, right? This is important because it gives us a higher, higher, higher close. It, it invalidates that previous trend, which gives us a higher probability, right, by a very small degree, but a higher probability that, that we may continue up instead of continuing down. And if we just look at the symmetry of this or, or kind of think about the potential symmetry of this, look at this zone of the left shoulder, right? For you guys that were at the Navigator Summit, we talked all about candlestick formations, right? We talked all about reading strength. What do the bodies uh, and closes tell us? What do the wicks tell us, right? Look at this area right here. And let's just extend this line further and further and further and get it down a little bit. What do we have on the other side, right? Similar types of tests, right? We obviously have this test right here. We've got this test right here, right? We channel off this level of support holds for a little bit before it breaks. We consolidate right here again. And then we come back to it after breaking to the upside, another test right there. If price action were to return down to this level, Boom, this would give us a symmetrical right shoulder. This could be used as an aggressive entry into the head and shoulders. Now it's aggressive because the head and shoulders pattern is not confirmed, right? Um, a confirmation of the head and shoulders means a break and close above the neckline. So you're, it's, it, it is what it is, it's, it's an aggressive approach. But if you're someone that's looking to get involved early, this would be a way to do it. So wanted to throw that in just because, again, we, we, we ended up uh, in the footage I showed you talking a lot about the day trading side of things, but the swing trading side of things was still on the table all week. We were just waiting and lurking and um, lurking sounds weird. We were waiting and stalking. Uh, stalking sounds weird, too. We were waiting and observing right for the opportunity that we needed and unfortunately uh we we did so all week got to the end of the week and now that opportunity is gone so we don't cry we don't moan we don't throw a pity party we erase everything we reset our analysis we go through our process and we start gearing up for the next potential opportunity so hope you guys enjoyed that and got something out of it. Again, if you want more information or want to hear me rant more about the differences between swing trading and day trading, I've got a few podcast episodes uh, on it. You can check out the Trading Coach podcast. I'll, I'll link some below or pop some up on the screen here. Um, speaking of podcasts, also thank you guys for the massive support. Uh, Spotify did this cool thing where it gave me a, a year-end wrap-up and it told me all these cool stats about how great the podcast has been and how much you guys have been listening. I just want to say a big thank you. For you guys that were with me from the beginning, you know there was no rhyme or reason or plan for starting it. It was just another avenue that we can use to kind of help motivate, empower, inspire traders out there by kind of providing the, or sharing, I guess, the, the daily tips that um, I work with the traders on my platform on, but also sharing more of my story. You know, my story for you guys that are new is I, I didn't graduate from Ivy League school. I didn't work on Wall Street. I'm not a super trader. I, I kind of 
I started young, I started dumb, I did things the hard way, figured it out, and, and on that path learned a hell of a lot of lessons. And um, kind of my duty now, at least the way I feel, is to really give back by providing those lessons to you guys and, and hopefully you know, making it known what obstacles you're going to face, giving advice on what you should do when you face them, and hopefully cutting down that learning curve that it takes for you to go from struggling to consistently profitable trader. So check it out, the Trading Coach Podcast. We're going to keep going strong next year. We'll hit episode 500 and beyond. Thank you for supporting that. Thank you for supporting this YouTube video. As always, before you leave, hit that like button. Leave me a comment if you want to say good job, if you want to say bad job, or if you have any questions about anything you saw in today's video. And of course, if you're new and you don't want to miss next week's video or anything else that I put up, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure that notification bell is hit. That way you are informed. All right, traders, until next time, plan to trade, trade your plan. Take care.